I want to welcome all of those who are here as family and friends of our five first communicants. We are in the month of May, the first day of the month of mothers and of the mother of Jesus, our Lord, our Lord's mother uh, Mary. Also, today is the feast of St. Joseph the Worker. There are two feasts of St. Joseph, March 19 and May 1st. This is the Worker. Our Lord, God himself, wanted to work with his hands. He came to us as a blue collar worker, a manual laborer, a middle class person. That's how he saved us, by working. And so all of us, we who work, he sanctified work. He transformed the nature of work, which up to this point had been a curse, into a blessing. It is a blessing to work. And while we have life and breath here on earth, we work. There's plenty of time to rest in heaven. Now is the time to work and work with our hands. We have five children who will be making their first Holy Communion. They made their confessions yesterday and today. And now they receive the bread of life, the flesh of God, to become part of the body of Christ, to become one with the eternal God, to become fully Catholic, the church that has no identity apart from the Holy Eucharist. They will become fully part of the Ecclesia de Eucharistia, the Church of the Eucharist. Food is love. We all know it. The way we show each other we love each other is to feed each other. Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, birthday parties, daily dinners around the table, food is love. In the Holy Mass, Jesus doesn't just talk to us doesn't just give us the word of life, he gives us the word made flesh. He feeds us. We actually physically eat at every mass. But not only do we eat bread, our Lord feeds us. He feeds his guests with his own body and blood. He feeds us with his own death and resurrection. He dies so that we will not have to die. The bread that we receive at mass is not just sustaining us by means of calories and nutrition. It's taking the place of our death because all of us would die eternally had he not died in time. Had he not given his life on the cross, we would be crucified, each one of us, and never get to heaven. But this bread, as he said in John chapter six, is the bread of life. He who eats this bread will never die. And should he die, he will be raised up again. Now just to mention about the tremendous gospel we have today, after the resurrection, our Lord appears for the third time at the Sea of Galilee. And he appears with bread, but he needs the fish. And so, he says to Peter, after he has fed them with the fish that he has provided, the bread and the fish, three times, do you love me? But he doesn't just say, do you love me? He says, do you love me more than these? Than these what? Than the other apostles, than his best friends, than his fishing business. Maybe he was pointing to the boat with the fish. Do you love me more than fish? Do you love me more than food? Do you love me more than your iPhone? Do you love me more than your bank account? Do you love me more than your career? Do you love me more than everything else? And the word Jesus uses in Greek is agape, which means unconditional love. No holds barred, everything in it. Do you love me completely? 
Do you trust me all the way? And what does Peter reply? He says, he kind of mumbles, he evades the question. He says, well, I like you, because that's the word he uses in Greek. He uses the word philiane, philios. I, I like you. I, don't, I can't quite say I love you, but we're friends. I like you. And so our Lord asks him a second time and a third time because Jesus had been betrayed, he had been denied, Peter had denied our Lord three times, so now he gets three chances to say, I love you. I will lay down my life for you. So again, our Lord asks Peter the second time, do you love me, agape? Do you love me unconditionally? Peter says, I feel you, I like you. I like you, you know I like you. Third time, our Lord asks Peter, and this time he switches to the verb like. Peter, do you even like me? Are we even friends? And Peter says, Lord, you know all things. You know that I like you. You know how weak I am. That's what Peter is saying. We know each other. You know me better than I know myself. You know my limits. But I don't love you more than these. But I want to. Help me, Lord, to learn how to love you, to trust you, to die for you, because you died for me. Peter knows all of these things. He just doesn't have the fortitude to make that leap of faith to love him unconditionally. But at least he says, Lord, you know all things. You are omniscient. You are the Lord. Help me. Help me to love you and to trust you. Now, when you come up for Holy Communion, children, what do you say when the priest says the body of Christ? What do you say? Can you hear me? Sorry about the sound system. Uh, okay, let's pick on somebody here. Santina, what do you say when the priest says the body of Christ? Amen, of course. And what does amen mean? It means, yes, Lord. It means, so be it. It means, I believe. It means, Lord, I agape you. I love you unconditionally. I believe and I trust you. So every time you come to Mass, the Lord Jesus says to you what he said to Peter, do you love me more than everything else? And we get the chance to say, amen, I do. I do love you more than anything else. Or at least if I don't, I want to. Help me. And that's what the bread of life does. It transforms us into the body of Christ. He's bigger than us. He's infinite. So when we receive him into us, we become what the greater thing is. He overcomes us like he overcame Our Lady, the overshadowed by the power of the Holy Spirit, so are we when we receive Holy Communion. Our faith is weak. Our love is inconstant and superficial. A light wind can blow our faith over. And we too will deny Jesus. We will say, I don't know the man. We will say, I've got other things to do on Sunday than go to Mass. We will probably do that at some point in our life. We will say, I choose the world. I trust the world. I trust CNN or anybody else more than God. Does that ever, do we ever say that? Of course we do sometimes. And that's when we need to come like Peter. Lord, you know all things you love. You know that I love you. We will only love God as he should be loved if we receive the bread of life, the Holy Eucharist, Holy Communion. And Our Lady will help us. That's why God 
That's why Jesus gave her to us from the cross. So go to Mass every Sunday and receive Holy Communion in a state of grace. When you need to go to confession, go to confession. Pray the Holy Rosary. Say a prayer to St. Joseph. We're all in this together. And we will all make it to heaven by the grace of God. We will avoid hell, eternal death, if we faithfully receive the Holy Eucharist. Week after week, we will become what we receive.